Hey guys, Underground Geek here. Let's talk about a comic book for a minute, shall we? This is a little bit different. I'm trying to change things up. Uh, not so much review comics as talk about uh, the premise behind them, what's good, what's bad, and uh, why they work and why they don't work. And uh, I'm going to talk about Cable. I just got done reading Cable number four. And I can tell you, it was so good, I blew through that whole comic within like two or three minutes. I mean, I was just blowing through there reading that dialogue. And I mean, that, that's the way a comic should be. You should be wanting to know what's happening next as soon as you get done reading it, you know? And the people that write uh, that comic definitely know what they are doing. Um, let's see if I can get it pulled up here real quick where I can look at it again. Uh, but for some reason... This comic is being kept under the radar. I'm not sure why, but uh, it's definitely one of those comics that you should check out if you're not already checking it out. And uh, this is issue number four. This one is. And so last issue, he got uh, kind of incapacitated a little bit by uh, Conquest, the guy he's been chasing, the guy that's been looking for the pieces of a time sword. And uh, when he puts them all together, he can pretty much rip through reality and do whatever he wants. So tra he's traveling through time after him. And so he made up with him. He's talking to Rasputin because he's been giving Rasputin weapons. And uh, Cable is trying to fight him. Uh, and this comic book is just great. I mean, you've got a story. You've got execution. you got a, a bad A uh, hero here taking... No chances. I mean, he's kicking tail, taking names, kind of type deal. Meet it action. I mean, it's it's great. Um, the art is very is is pretty decent. I mean, it's not amazing, but it's decent. But it's it's so good story wise that even average artwork is just top notch to me. I mean, that, isn't that the way it goes? Uh, if one's better than the other one, a lot of times it can kind of help the storyline. But these are both above average to me. Um, then Cable, I mean, if you're not reading this comic, you need to read it. it there, there's four or five good stories to me right now coming out of Marvel, and this is one of them. I read them. I read him. I read uh, Venom. I read uh, a little bit of Moon Knight. Uh, I'm trying to think if there's another one I read. But uh, I've been reading more here lately so I can roast them, but that's about it. I try to support my local comic book store. Uh, I'll tell them, hey, order me one or two of the bad issues. That way I can uh, review it. And that's about it. But this story is great. I mean, you really need to check it out. The, uh, they've got uh, sci-fi in the story, but it's it's in it very well. It's not cheesy. They've got the weapons that look a lot like the ninjas on the Iron Man uh, comic series right now, like uh, the swords and stuff. So they might be linked, but... Uh, I don't know. It's just it's really cool. It's got these uh, uh, this one scene where he's uh, talking and he's fighting the bad guys. And he says, I fought whole armies and you are nothing. And he's like swinging around his gun, smacking people. Um, he uh, at one point he's standing there and it's a close up on his eye. He sees the gun. He grabs a gun. He, he snarls and he just goes to him, to him, to him, to shooting this huge gun. I mean, taking people out. It's amazing. It's amazing. You really need to check it out. Table number four. But let's talk about why this comic works. It works because you've got a clear hero, you've got a clear villain, and you've got obstacles that both of them have to uh, get over, which is each other. Okay? They're both trying to fight for one thing. One's trying to save the universe. One's trying to destroy the universe. There you go. What else more do you need? And then you throw a little bit of... of uh, Alter, you know, interior motives in there, a little bit of uh, any windows and things like that uh, in the storyline if you, if you just absolutely had to. But if they turn around and did uh, the big three like this again, like let's, let's say they, they did Thor, they did Captain America, and they did uh, Iron Man like this. Clear story, clear villain each episode or each uh, issue, I always say episode, I don't know why I do that, but uh, th it would do great, okay? And I talked about this before, I had an idea a while back, what if they took the top three 
and they uh, they put the top three in adventures, almost like Avengers, but had an adventure book with all three of the top three in there and had them each time doing something. You know what I mean? Like, uh, I don't know, almost like Trinity on DC Comics where you had the big three on there, uh, Superman, Batman, and Wonder Woman. And it's them three together each time, and they're doing some kind of adventure. I mean, they're after some bad guy, or some bad guy's after them, you know. That's the way they need to do it. They had Captain America, Thor, and, and Iron Man. And maybe bring back uh, Ant-Man, have him a little bit better uh, storyline, because, you know, he had that one storyline. I don't even know. Has it been canceled yet? Has Ant-Man been canceled? Because I read it, and it was boring as crap. I stopped after, like, two issues. I couldn't handle it anymore. I really wanted to like it because the movie had just come out. But anyway, that that's kind of my thing about it. Um, Cable gets it right. I was uh, intrigued the entire time. I didn't even really read what was going on. I read the dialogue a little bit and just kept flipping because I was just like drawn in. I guess that's why I like the movie John Wick so much. Because he goes in there and he says, you killed my dog. And then he just kills everybody. I mean, do we need anything else? Um, and, you know, I'm not saying it has to be like that every time. I'm not saying it has to be just full of action every time and there's nothing else. But if you've got decent dialogue and then you've got great fight scenes that come out of that dialogue and you've got pretty good splash pages, I mean, you're going to make a great comic. And I don't understand why they can't figure that out. I'm going to flip to the front of this comic and see if I can't see all the writers and everything. Um, okay, so we've got... Uh, we got assistant editor Chris Robinson, associate editor, editor, whatever that is, Mark Basso, editor Mark uh, Panicia, and we got editor in chief Alex Lorenzo, but uh, whatever. Uh, these guys are good. I mean, you've got three editors, sure, but they did their job. Just like you'll see three editors on a comic and it's crap. At least these guys knew what they were doing. They, they're doing a good storyline. They know what cable is, and they're executing it. Okay, just like when a football coach says, we're going to go out there and we're going to execute 100%. That's what they did. They got their game plan. And they said, look, we're going to execute Cable 100%. Go out there, kicking butt, taking names. You know, uh, the colorist, uh, okay, the writer right here, James Robinson. There you go, James Robinson. All right, he's he's the man, apparently. He knows what he's doing, and you got these editors backing him up. The artist is Yodere Sinar. Guys, y'all got to get easier names than this. Yodere, okay. And then you got Jesus uh, Alberto and Federico Blee doing the colors, and Dale uh, Keon and Jason Keith doing cover arts. Um, it's great. I mean, check it out. But I'm just saying, if you did a top three comic this way, you would have a, a home run every time. They would buy that comic. Trinity would do better, I think, if they advertise it a little bit better on DC because I really do keep up with that. That's I love every cover of that series, and I love every story of it. It's kind of like All-Star Batman. Um, All-Star Batman works for me because he goes in there and just kicks butt. I mean, he doesn't play any games. It's not kind of like Batman is right now where somebody's kind of taking over the story from him. All-Star Batman comes in and handles it. Um, and that's why, again, that's why Cable works. He is front and center. Like, like Diversity in Comics has said one time, you, if you've got a comic with somebody's name in it, you've got to have that, story, that guy being front and center being awesome. That's what makes a comic good, and that's what he does. He goes in there. He actually ends the comic <laughs> catching the bad guy off guard, okay, and then gets it set up for the next comic. Spoiler alert. I mean, and that's what's so great. He actually tricks the bad guy instead of the other way around on a cliffhanger. And then we get a setup for the next comic where he's going He's going to be in the Savage Land, and that is awesome. Cable in the Savage Land with dinosaurs and ray guns. That's great. Uh, but, yeah, that's, just, that's, my, that's my two cents. That's what I think should happen. That's why I think that they did good on this. The only, the only bad thing I think about it is it wasn't longer. I mean, I wish it had been a little bit longer comic. Why can't we make these as long as uh, freaking Secret Empire? 
Give us a twofer, man. Anyway, uh, hit the thumbs up, hit the notifications button so you can get all my uh, videos and tell me what you think about this little bit different uh, aspect on the video that I'm doing now and uh, give me some pointers, man. All right, guys. Bye.